Hello and welcome to the St Albans City FC end of season review. I'm Johnny Seabrook alongside superfan Tom Dean, our skipper Joe Partington, our manager John Meeks and our chairman Lawrence Levy. This is being recorded on the 1st of May so just in case anything happens in the meantime we know where we are. Joe you turned up in October we're going to ask why it wasn't at the, in the middle of the summer in the pre-season, but um, pleased you joined us. How did you find things when you came on board? Well, I did turn up in the summer. Oh, right. Uh, there we go. Uh, I was here. I spoke to, obviously, to John and, and David, and, um, and the decision in the end was logistical, to be honest. Mm. Um, my life was changing from full-time football, obviously, to, to part-time um, alongside work which a lot of people will probably recognise on most people's feet. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just made the decision at the time that I thought it was just the right, the right thing to mm -hmm. do and, and probably in hindsight it wasn't. I sort of knew that quite quickly um, and in the end obviously managed to find my way here and, and settled in quite quickly, I think. Um, yeah. How did you find that though? Were they a settled squad, happy squad? Was it just as the changing room just as important as what was going on the pitch? Yeah, yeah, it always is at football club, right? But I think at my age, um, and many of the guys in the changing room have shared similar experiences yeah. where you go into a lot of different changing rooms and football is a strange environment where you just you sort of you meet new and, and you and you pass through old quite quickly. It's sort of like football mm -hmm. never sleeps, so you might have a new teammate on a Saturday and, and you might not ever see him again the weekend after. It's just sort of how that happens and being able to understand how to go into different changing rooms and manage, I guess, those relationships and people is becomes an experience thing. But no, I mean, John and, and David have put together a really good team of, of really good guys. And, and I don't want to, I know you're sitting right in the middle between me and John, so I don't want to put you on the spot here and make you feel awkward, but was he a shoe in for having the armband? Was that what you had in mind, John, when Joe came in? Yeah, in the, in the summer, obviously, when we were talking to him, we identified him and, and obviously we did our homework on him and, he, and he's a leader and the, something you always need in, in the dressing room uh, as well as out on the pitch. And, and Joe's got those, uh, those qualities and, uh, and that's why we made him captain. Of course. And um, just moving over to Lawrence as well. Once the season finished and the Oxford uh, game was out of the way, what did you have to do? What was going on throughout that sort of close season period? Well, from a, from a playing side, it's the recruitment of um, the players that you need. Um, so you work with the manager um, uh, to do that and with the, with the, the team of people in recruitment. Uh, but the other thing we needed to do is we looked at the facilities we had, the offering that we gave, uh, the match day experience. And that was the biggest thing is um, wanting to improve on the food and beverage. Um, and I think that we showed that um, we did that. We, uh, uh, we brought in a couple of other concessions, mm -hmm. a couple of other areas. We had some of the terracing cracking at the Clarence Road end, and we kind of thought, well, that's it's not safe long term, but also we used the opportunity to create an environment there where we could uh, make um, more of a match day experience on the other corner. So we took away some of that terracing. Um, so we used the closed season to look at the ground and how do we make it a better experience and I think from the attendance uh, that grew last season and the engagement that we got, I think you find that, um, um, well, ask, ask Tom, I mean, is it, is it a better environment than it was the previous year? I think so, definitely. Even just people talking about Chicken George, for example, <laughs> who we brought in, you know, people really enjoy that. So yeah, I think definitely from last season, previous season is. And also we to prepare for the, we to prepare for the women, because we launched uh, the women's t uh, team, which mm. we never had. and. Um, that was something that from an off the pitch side was really successful and hopefully uh, with the game on Sunday um, we're looking at uh, staying in the league yeah. from our first season next season so we've got two first teams here we've got the men's on the Saturdays and the women on the Sunday so there was a lot of preparation for that. And Tom mentioned Chicken George, Mad Squirrel Chicken George, those signings are important aren't they for the club? Well they are, they're important for the club because they um, it, it in fact, both Chicken, Chicken George and Mad Squirrel have been involved in our engagement of the community mm. as well. So, um, and actually, funnily enough, and we'll talk about next season. I'm sure you're going to ask us about next season, but um, <laughs> we're, we've, um, we're doing more with Chicken George next year. They want to do more. They want to do the Sundays for the women as well. So we're, we're really building our offering. And we, in fact, we had a meeting this morning where we talk about how we better what we had last season. Because although we are growing, we want to 
we're not there yet. We want to make it better. We want people to come back and say, we already know clubs like Yeovil have said it's the best experience, away mm. experience, which for a, for a big club like Yeovil to say, this is their fans' best away day. Um, we want to make sure that for every club in the league, the away day is the best experience is here. And we've heard, I mean, I was doing an interview on the radio and with another club who was saying that they want to replicate some of the things that are actually happening here at Clarence Park. Which means we have to innovate yeah. to be better the next Keep, keep yeah. it moving, keep it moving. So moving through the year, um, we come to October and one of the big things in October that a lot of people were talking about on the stands, around the ground, was Sean Jeffers. And Sean played throughout the season 45 times, scored 35 goals. There was a bit of frustration about him not being selected. I mean, what, what could you tell us really about that whole scenario, John? Um, that's not the work. <laughs> he went, yeah. I could, I could sense some of that, but not from within the dressing room or within yeah. the team. It's, it's a style of play that we're trying, trying to play. Um, and we'd introduce that pre-season and, and something that, again, Sean, Sean will look at. I think all players should always be learning. And we're mm. trying to introduce a, a, a different pattern of play and, uh, and could he grasp the, the whole thing we're doing? Yeah, Sean scores goals. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, but we should build a team around Sean, but we wanted him to adapt and do some other things. and. Uh, and over the season, he gradually got that, and hence why, in the, in the end, he, he's in the team. And especially when I, I took over fully as well, that uh, um, we adjusted a few things about other players to do uh, other aspects of what we wanted to do, and uh, and he's trying to get that blend right that he can he can do those those other aspects of his game, not just scoring goals to to lead the line, <coughs> to hold the ball up, to run in behind, um, and. We need that to work for the rest of the rest of the group to work in the way we want to play. So, um, and we gradually gradually got there, and he, and he got better doing those. And hence why because the team scores the goals. David spoke about data, and it was the data. There's there seems to be a lot of data and statistics coming into football. It surely, is the ultimate data though the goals that he scores? That's that's one element mm. of it. And I mean, data. Da I think people carry away what data is there for, mm. and, and data in, in in the new world of football is available too, which you didn't have in. In, in the olden days, you had to do it all by, by eye or someone re recording it. Now it's all available to us, and we only use it um, to, to break things down just to give us uh, really confirm what you've seen and, and back it up. And, I, and we use it, and, the, and Joe can come in, we, can, um, we share it with the players, and it gives them an insight of what's expected, whether it's the amount of passes that they do, uh, to how their jewels are defensively or offensively, how, how, we, uh, how we manage corners for and against. So it's not just about, yeah. Cool. Stat that's on, on the on the on the side by the fans it might be he scores goals and he's <laughs> top of the leaderboard and what's his assists like now they're bringing assists in fact they're bringing in second and third assists right. Joe's got very good at third assists because he's at the back it takes yeah. a lot of time to get forward doesn't it yeah. so. <laughs> what was it like on the stands because people were talking about it yeah I think people were just trying to see both sides of the situation obviously you could see that when he plays he scores but you know we'd listen to David and he'd say you know, Mitch are brilliant getting him behind and all of that and, and Mitch was playing well so it was, I think people maybe didn't quite understand and then obviously when he comes back in the team later on in the season he scores the goals and it, you kind of think why didn't we play him earlier but then you actually take a step back and as, as John says, you know, things have adapted, things have changed, mm -hmm. you kind of get him back in the team and then it, when he plays he, he does score so yeah, and I think his professionalism sort of shone through, didn't it, really, in the whole situation with that? Oh, sure, he is, he's a great lad in the dressing room. Um, he's a great lad to, to, to ha as, a, as a manager to manage his, his, his discipline and professionalism through training, through everything, it was second to none. Not a player that was moping around or anything like that. He just done his job and, and waited for his chance to get back in. And obviously what he has to do when he does is score. And he, and he does that very well. Now, as we move through the season and we sort of talk, I'm moving to February time, I um, want to talk about George Hoddle because George had a fantastic impact really this season. Uh, he had to return to Cambridge. Um, that was a, a real hassle, wasn't it, John? Is that one of the problems with the lone players that we've got using this system? Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, everyone's open to it because it's something that happens throughout this level. Yeah, but, depending on whether they're. Uh, a youth player in a, in a professional club or, or a, a full, fully um, uh, signed up professional, there's, yeah. there's different rules, they, they're governed by the, the, the January window, but obviously the, the youth ones aren't and it comes under that umbrella. So depending on where it, where it sits, then 
it can work for you, um, but then there's the, there's the downside for it. And obviously, George has come in as a, as a young lad, and uh, he'll have a good career in front of him. He's, he's very, very level-headed. He wants to learn. It's a heavy name to wear as well. Well, yes, yeah, that, that, <laughs> yes, that comes, yes. comes with it. Yeah. And, um, but uh, he, he settled into the dressing really well as well. He, he wasn't sh shy um, and got to know the player as well. And that's why he, he got in the team. And uh, and again, we played him in a couple of positions because he's. I think he's yes. clever enough. He yeah. had 17 to understand some of those. And whether we played him as a as a as a ten or as a as a six, he was we was able to to address address that and, and deal with it. And that's why he, he stayed in the team. So was he a loss? I think the boys say he, he probably was, and things yes. may have may have changed. Yeah. Um, on there because we had the momentum and it, yeah, why well, you've got momentum, you don't want to change things if you can and, and, and that and that's probably was a potential turning point. Okay, um, what was it like um, from, from the fan perspective to have a hoddle out there and seeing George play? Yeah, I remember uh, uh, one of David's post-matches, uh, he was asked about one of his performances, I can't remember which game, obviously I do one in the season <clears throat> and David just replied, well, he's a hoddle. And he was just... <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, he was yeah. just brilliant you could tell straight away uh, his quality and yeah. it was great to have him he was such a good player um yeah great to have a huddle at the club and see glenn down here quite a lot as well yes. which yeah. is also yeah. nice. he's, he's got i mean his, his whole family was supportive i mean his dad his mum were always here um, um i think his sister's girlfriend all the i mean they were all sort the whole family used yeah. to come and support him so and it's good what you see i mean most of our players have got family members, certainly the younger yes, players have family that's a key members thing, actually. Yeah. that come down and support. So they were a great support for him as well. Yeah. Mm. Now also, do you think if he had stayed, I know if, buts, what's, maybes, if he had stayed, would it have made a difference yes. from your perspective? Yes, yeah, so definitely. Well, you've, you've gone straight in there then. <laughs> yes. Expandable or he's is bloody, it simple? He's bloody brilliant. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> no, it, honestly, yeah. he's a, I know he's an 18 year old child, like, well, child, he's an 18 year old kid, but he's, yeah. he's ready to play. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm surprised that he's not got a sniff more at Cambridge. Yes, like, yes. I believe he's that good. Mm. I actually had a, like a work thing earlier on in the year. and. Um, and Glenn was assigned to my three ball and we played golf with each other. I've obviously yeah. never met Glenn before. Trim his ear off obviously the whole way around about 30. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and he says, oh yeah, I've got a, um, I've, I've, you know, I don't know what, obviously what relation George is to him. The cousins maybe. A second cousin. Second cousin. cousin. Yeah, there you go. Something and, um, like <laughs> and he's saying, oh um, yeah, George plays at Cambridge. He's, he's a good young player. He's on loan at St Albans, got injured. But he's come back, but I think when he gets fit, he's going to go back there. I think I still was a was playing obviously somewhere else at that point, and I'm thinking, oh, I wonder he's like if he's any good. And then obviously when he turned up, I said oh, I was playing golf with Glenn. Yeah. Like I've had a chat with him about it, and then after about maybe two training sessions and a game, I thought he's really good. Yeah. And then he got better, and he got better, and then suddenly he became a really important piece of what we were trying to do. I think there was a game at Dartford maybe where he played deeper, then played higher, then played wing back, yeah, okay. and it was. And I'm thinking, I'm walking off thinking, he can do everything. Like, <laughs> it's not, and, but I get it that we're at this level and at, at League One it's it's more difficult and yeah. um, and John's right, he's gonna have a career. And um, and these are the but these are the places where players of the age that George is with his potential that they come to learn about themselves and if they're capable or not. And some players from that level will come and will struggle. Uh, and George is a positive example of, of someone who came down and, and really flourished and Lads loved him, he was a humble guy. Um, Lawrence is right, like great family. Glenn followed us all over the place. Yeah. Like he had a game on a Tuesday night that was a cup game, which historically doesn't really get watched by mm. many people. And, uh, and Glenn was here. I said to him, like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, well, what else should I be doing? Yes. Just, like, I think he's just for his family at Football Mad, and I'm actually very excited to see, see what happens to George. Yeah, I think we all want to follow that. Now, Thinking about the year and going through the year, in February, um, talking Enter Shikari now, they played at Wembley Arena yeah. and they came on stage wearing St Albans shirts. That must have been a big, big moment for the club and I for think, the partnership. Yeah, I mean, I think a couple of times, Raoul, the lead singer, has, has worn our shirt. He's got a number 18. Who's on a number 18? Francis Clark. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, so Aiden, Aiden, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah well, so Raoul, I think he's got a number, <laughs> number 18 Raoul on the back or something on the shirt. Yeah, they played in it a couple of times. Um, um, I think he comes on the encore in the shirt as well. Does he? So um, it was surprising, obviously, with me. But we loved it. Lawrence invited us to that gig, 
and the lights come on at the end, everyone's obviously leaving. There's just this St. Albans shirts everywhere. I can't believe how many people <laughs> actually buy the shirt because yeah. of this, because they sponsor the, yeah. the shirt, yeah. I suppose it's part of getting the name out there and part of the wider community, really, isn't it, of the club? Yeah, I mean, we, we're doing all sorts of things with, uh, with the band and music and with um, looking at the community, how can football and rock music work together in the community. Um, and it's great. They're, I mean, they're four, four lads from St Albans who love the football club. They come down here all the time. Certainly Chris is down here nearly every game. Yeah. When they're not touring, of course. of course. I mean, obviously when they're on tour, they won't fly back mm. just to see. And it's been, I don't been, know why, they should do. Okay. We're four or five years into this now, aren't we? This partnership. I think it's, it's, I think four, it's four years Four now. years into four it, years, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... Um, and one that we can see flourishing and continuing. Yeah, because I think we'll do more work off the pitch as well. I think we'll do some work with uh, the foundation um, that we're looking at where we can offer... Um, not only football, but we can offer music therapy and all these different things to the community as well. So, so it's a partnership more than just um, more than just having a, a name on the shirt. Right. Um, but it was a good gig, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> well, I didn't know what to expect. Had you not been to anything like that before? That well, sort of heavy to, rock. Don't get me so wrong. I'm like sort of into my music and I've been yeah. to festivals and gigs and stuff, yeah. but not quite like that. Like they were. <laughs> Like, I think it was only the second song, he started crowd surfing, the guy was just, he was, a, he was on his head. I mean, 12,000 people, when they were yeah. in, the production of it was amazing. It was awesome, yeah, it was really cool. And they've got obviously certain songs that the like, diehard fans do different things yes, for. Yeah. And, well, it's so how we arrived, wasn't it? We, we got taped backstage. Oh, did yeah, you? We just went along, we had our own dressing room, so <laughs> our dressing room was next to their dressing room, so the boys all turned up coming off the coach from Bath. So we got chains and we walked out into the mosh pit, mm. yeah. and it was mad, so we can't stay in here, so we went up and watched it from, a, luckily yeah. we did go up and watch Although it. Although Jack wanted to, Jack wanted to. Oh, I can, yeah, yeah, I yeah. can imagine. No, Jack yes. wanted to be in the mosh pit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. There were some good yeah. pictures on Instagram I saw, yeah, yeah. like yeah. a fun night out for you lot. No, I think, I think the captain said, Jack, you're coming up with us, you're not going to be joking with me next week. I left him down there. It's a sort of like there's, I know there's, bigger clubs around, like the Lutons and the Watfords or, or whatever, but it's, it's obviously a certain vibe in St Albans that people come and support the football club, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, and most clubs at these levels are, are quite big in the community and that sort of feels like what this is. I feel part of it, I mean, football is, is a tribal sport and we're all part of the same, if you like, tribe. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether you're the chairman, whether you're the captain, the manager, uh, a fan or, or or whoever, we're all in this together. We all want to see this football club succeed, grow, uh, and yeah, have the success that it, and I think it deserves. I think we deserve success as a football club. And what role do you have to play as captain with these youngsters coming in? As, well, a, as a mature member of the, uh, yeah, 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 I was yeah, gonna yeah, say. Yeah. I'll take older brother. <laughs> <laughs> older brother, yeah.